It's a nice summer's day in the UK right now, however I am unable to go outside in order to enjoy it, so I've resorted to endangering the public with reckless driving instead. Speed time works? Not in real life of course, but in video games. So on Saturday the 3rd of May I started up a live stream on Burnout 3, and around 1 hour 16 minutes and 18 seconds into the stream, we took a short break to research some obscure early 2000s racing games that I had come across the night before. However, one rabbit hole led down another, and another. And soon enough, we find a game. It's called Midnight Outlaw, 6 hours to sunup. Because sunrise would have made too much sense. Midnight Outlaw 6 Hours to Sunup was released in 2005, which shouldn't come as a surprise considering the mass amount of Need for Speed clones that followed the release of the original Underground in 2003. However, the name bears resemblances to Midnight Club more than anything, and to me that doesn't seem entirely unintentional, considering these Russian promotional images I came across on the internet. One containing a stolen Midnight Club 2 render, and one is a straight up stolen edited cover of Midnight Club Street Racing, and if you think this is dodgy, we're only just getting started. Try a 19% positive feedback score on Steam. Push every boundary of your car and the law. Enter an explosive world where nitrous erupts and rubber burns. You live your life one race at a time, and from midnight to dawn, the adrenaline is on. Feel the raw power of your supercharged engine as you punch the accelerator. I'm not sure that's how it works. And yes, this game is available to buy. However, I strongly recommend that you don't. Because this game does not work on Windows 10. Or Windows 8. Or Windows 7. Or Windows XP. Or Windows Vista. Or 98. Or ME. Or 95. It doesn't really work at all. Some people claim to have fixes, however nothing I did was able to help. So I set up a Windows XP virtual machine and went from there. However, this was only the start of my nightmares. So you're probably wondering who the hell even made this thing, and uh, this is probably the most difficult thing I have ever had the script in my entire life. So if you'll bear with me, here is my best attempt. There is no Wikipedia page for Midnight Outlaw 6 Hours to Sunup, go figure. However, there is one for RPM Tuning, which is just the same game with a different name, for some obscure, unexplained reason. Here we can see that it was developed by Babylon Software, a French game development company, and then published by Wanadu Edition, a French game publisher. RPM Tuning was also known as Top Gear RPM Tuning. This is because it's part of the Top Gear series, which dates all the way back to Top Gear for the SNES in 1992. Here we can see that Top Gear 1992 was published by Kemco, keep that name in mind. Because contrary to Wikipedia, here we can see that Kemco are credited as publishers for RPM tuning in an IGN article from 2004, as well as in games database. There's even a Metacritic review stating, RPM tuning isn't worth a dumb racing joke about flat tires and blown engines. Please, Kemco, stop. And this was by Official Xbox Magazine. Internet Game Cars Database says it was published by MC2 and Valuesoft. And then Steam says it's Cosme slash Valuesoft. A Google search for Valuesoft brings up a wiki page of the number of games they've published, and sure enough, Midnight Outlaw 6 Hours to Sunup is indeed on that list. However, now it also involves retroism. I was able to dig up this Reddit post from 2016, mentioning Midnight Outlaw along with a link to the official Retroism website. However, this link no longer works, and if you search the racing game section on their website, Midnight Outlaw is nowhere to be found. So we've reached a dead end, but we have several potential suspects. However, we do know who developed it. Babylon Software. 
A Google search for Babylon software today brings up nothing but an Israeli translation software. Gonna be honest, I doubt there's any link to Midnight Outlaw here, but maybe that's just me giving them too much credit. There is next to no information regarding any game developer by the name of Babylon Software available anywhere online. However, I eventually found some results that at least mention the name in regards to video games. We can now confirm that they released a previous title in 2003, Furious Carding. Taking a dive into the files for Midnight Outlaw, we are able to dig up any of the game's video files directly. Here's one showing the Babylon Software logo. Now we know what it looks like. Scrolling down far on Google Image Search, we can eventually find that exact same logo. The link leads to a page on Giant Bomb, and sure enough, we find RPM Tuning, with the Chemco logo on its box. However, there is also another image showing Wannadu, and then another one showing CNI Games, which isn't even a publisher we've seen yet. What the fuck is going on? At this rate, it is anybody's guess who published what game title, where and on what. I literally do not give a flying fuck enough at this point, so just throw the publishers into a wheel and let it decide for us. Okay, we'll go with that one. Of course, while we're in the game files, I should point out that there's also the trailer for RPM tuning in here, which again just begs the question, why did they bother renaming it? Oh yeah, they wanted to trick people into thinking they're buying a Midnight Club game. That's why. Genius marketing. It's also worth noting that despite the cars in this game being renamed to avoid copyright issues, the files for these cars aren't renamed at all, and are actually just named after their real life counterparts. Not entirely sure just how legal that is, but I'm sure it's fine. Oh yeah, and here's what they sound like. And here's the soundtrack. <laughs> I haven't edited this by the way. This is, this is real. This this is real. Did nobody stop them and say, hey, enough bass is enough? And so finally, with everything out of the way, we are left only with the game itself. And somehow, it gets even worse. And it crashed. Great. Thanks. So here we are in the main menu screen. Jesus Christ, look at that font. Quick race, adventure, tune and race, options and quit. The one we're most interested in here is the quit button. Vince is searching for a stolen car. A GTSR model. Before we continue with this story, it is probably important for me to tell you that this game is borderline unplayable right from the start. Allowing any form of video to play in this game will result in an instant game crash. The only way, and I mean the only way, that you can play this game is if you mash the ever-living cunt out of your enter key every time a cutscene starts, in order to skip it before it gets the chance to crash. And thus today, I became a Midnight Outlaw speedrunner. However, salvation is at hand. Every single cutscene from this game is also available within the game files, but they have no sound. So, that's an issue. Or is it? Because the sound files are here too. Why didn't they just put the sound with the video? Drag the video here, and you drag the sound just, just underneath there, and yeah, there you go. Look, there, done. Why, why, what, yeah. Yeah. Now we get to choose our first car. We have a hatchback SI, pickup 150, and the Sport 322 CSI. As the owner of a black BMW myself, of course I had to choose this. Transmission, rear wheel, are you sure you want to? Bye. Why, 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 why didn't you just center the text? Why, no? Now we get to choose between tuning, cars, free ride, or continue story. In the cars menu, we get to rename car. Oh my god, yes! I'm spelling Nigel, stop panicking. So now we have our 197 horsepower Nigel. In the tuning menu, I gave him a super wing and some new wheels. However, Nigel is so dark that you can barely even see him. So I went to the paint shop to brighten him up a little. However, the game had other ideas and resorted to verbal insults, which wasn't particularly nice. 
I decided to spend the rest of my money on performance upgrades, the only noteworthy thing here being the fact that the stabilizer bar is called the Par Vibe Classic, which I thought was mildly amusing. So we're down to our final $5, however here is our finished Nigel. It's, it's not brilliant, but now we may continue the story. Oh fuck it crashed again. Soldier, if you can get that part for me by closing time, I'll let you date my baby sister. <laughs> right. What, what, what the fuck? In this same cutscene, if we zoom in on Burke's computer screen, it says next to number four, likes children. What am I supposed to make of this other than exactly what you think? Why, why is this in the game? What, what, why, did, why does he even say that? What's going on? So we're a few minutes in and we've already had to deal with a potential child predator. Admittedly, it's a lot more action than you'd get in the first five minutes of a Need for Speed game, but more importantly, we finally get to see some proper gameplay. The game's visuals are surprisingly not bad at all. If we ignore the terrible car sounds and the terrible music, the game appears to be running smoothly and nothing seems too out of the ordinary. After only a minute, the mission ends. Congratulations, you have unlocked parts. Don't exactly know what parts, but okay. The fucking game just crashed again. Oh, I swear to God. Whoa, pretty sweet ride, dude. What, what, why did that go on for so long? The, uh, the traffic light doesn't work. This racer challenges you to a death-defying race to the beach. Oh, we're just starting immediately. Okay. Also, I swear he was in a Civic in that cutscene. The race was not particularly close. However, after a collision with a truck, Nigel was locked into a fierce battle. A death-defying race. The opponent broke ahead. However, little did he know. Nigel has nitrous oxide. Oh, Jesus Christ, my eyes. I cannot see. I can't see. Why is everything blurred? I can't see. Please, no. Stop. Stop it. I can't see it. Oh, I, I, sorry. I've been blinded. I'm not entirely sure who decided that this was an acceptable visual effect, because it fucking isn't. I also want to find out who made this game's soundtrack and shatter their spine with a pole. And that's not to mention the awful collision physics, which were designed by someone with a handicap. In fact, it must be the same person who's driving the AI cars because they don't fucking work right either. So with the finish line only meters away, I resorted to involuntary assisted euthanasia and fucking smashed the cunt. The end of that mission just leads us back to the body shop. However, clicking continue story proceeded to crash my game again. So I promptly decided that I'd had enough of story mode and just resorted to watching the cutscenes instead. And the winner of the worst cutscene in video game history of any game that's ever existed ever goes to... It's Midnight Outlaw 6 hours, oh, just fuck you. Damn. We need back at first, okay? Carmen! What? What what just happened? What, what, what is going on? And then a man dies at the end. I would have loved to have gone into more detail regarding the story, but we'd simply be here all day dissecting 25 minutes of meaningless, awkward, painful cutscenes. I actually thought that Burke was the only character in this story who wasn't a complete and utter moron. But as it turns out, I'm wrong because he's a child molester. What a great, great story. All in all, it's fine. It's a better story than The Last of Us. Most PS2 street racing games with storylines shoved into them also share the same terrible voice acting, storyline, and dialogue. Nothing really to write home about, just hysterical to watch it unfold really as it tries to take itself seriously. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a compilation of all the cutscenes, in case you are interested in subjecting your to the same pain I have. Nobody has actually uploaded all the cutscenes for this game before, so I thought I might as well do it myself, because I bring enough horrors to this world already. So this game has an obnoxious, unplayable story, more traffic cars than playable cars, a soundtrack consisting of four massively bass-boosted songs, and less customization than every other street racing game at the time, despite having the freedom of not having licensing restrictions. It's unbelievable. I hate this game. There isn't a single redeeming factor about it. In fact, no. No, there is one thing that we haven't tried. There's a lot to say about Freeride, but I'm fed up of talking about this piece of shit at this point, so I'm going to keep it brief for the sake of my own sanity. Freeride is the home of the most game-breaking bug in this entire game. They had one 
single game mode to redeem themselves and they fucked that up too. Freeride has this thing I'm going to call the fog. I call it this because I have absolutely no idea whether it is intentional or not, but it makes this game almost completely unplayable. So much to the point that it really needs to be seen to be believed. I'm leaning towards this being completely unintentional, considering that there is no way in given hell that any competent game developer would step back and think this is acceptable. No? Okay, maybe I'm giving them too much credit. The fact that blasting the nitrous seems to clear everything kinda says it all to me. This godforsaken fog makes any potentially enjoyable experience with driving in this game ruined and unplayable every time you encounter it. And it happens a lot too. Of course this game's map is set in Los Angeles, because it wouldn't be a bit like Club Bootleg otherwise. I would show you the map if there was an option to. And there isn't. You can't even do anything in free roam other than just free roam. It says on the tin, I suppose. It wasn't until I managed to find this twisty mountain road off the side of the map that I realised how much potential this game could have had that was all completely thrown away. These narrow twisty roads are good. There's something a bit different. And maybe if I could see the road without having to light the sky orange every time just to turn them visible, they might be enjoyable to race on too. The city itself is nicely populated with a variety of shops and landmarks to remember and it doesn't get as tiresome or repetitive as you might expect it to. However, what surprises me the most is the car handling and physics themselves. Because for the most part, it's actually rather enjoyable. It feels 10 times better than that Street Racing Syndicate game I played before. But the main problem is, all these little droplets of potential were sprinkled into the jarring mangled mess of horrific, broken, hopeless bollocks that we're calling Midnight Outlaw, six hours to sunup. This is it. This is the worst racing game I've ever played. But it's not quite on the same hateful level as some of the other games I share a despise for. There are plenty of bad games out there that I did not enjoy and would never return to again. However, Midnight Outlaw doesn't quite feel like that. Dare I say, it is the room of racing games. It's so bad that it's good, but that in and of itself is not a good thing. But for that reason alone, I enjoyed it more than Street Racing Syndicate, even though it somehow manages to be five times worse. It's a bit of a backhanded compliment, really. If RPM tuning on console has the same content as this game, but without any game-breaking bugs, the constant crashing, the bass-boosted music, or the fog, then I will gladly mark that off as another mediocre mid-2000 street racer and forget it ever existed and move on with my life. But regardless of RPM tuning, the very fact that Midnight Outlaw, six hours to sun up, exists is a mistake in and of itself. I don't know who came up with this. I don't know who published it, or who the developers are, or the story behind them. But I don't care. I don't care. Thank you. I enjoyed your game just for all the wrong reasons. And the conclusion you've all been waiting for. Bit of a long one this, however, here is my epilogue. Midnight Outlaw 6 Hours to Sun Up is a forgotten street racing game released in 2005 that still deserves to be forgotten. The game is virtually impossible to play anymore, I even struggled to make it work on its original operating systems, and even when it did work, it was still borderline unplayable. How anyone played this game on a PC will forever be a mystery to me, but if you really want a playable version of this game for yourself, it looks like RPM tuning on console is your best bet. Babylon games have long since disappeared off the map, and I don't think I need to explain why. Game development is by no means easy, but let me put it this way. Somewhere out there, someone is still collecting that £5 price tag from behind closed doors.